This morning we're going to continue our studies in the second reading of Parshat Vashana. So Moshe Rabbeinu is continuing recapping of history and this is pretty heavy sermonic stuff from verse 32 onwards. Just go through these verses quickly and then we're going to focus on God tearing open the heavens. I'm going to get ripped. Kishalna liyomim harishainim. Please. Moshe says, go, ask. See if in the past, it's from the time that God has created humanity on the face of earth. From one end of the heavens to the other. Have you ever seen, has anything ever been like this? Has anything ever been heard about it? What? Verse 33. Has a nation heard the voice of God speaking amidst the fire? Ka'asher shomata as you did. Ata vayechi and you lived. Has such a thing ever happened? So Moshe Rabbeinu now is preparing the Jewish people for the restatement of Aseret HaDibrot, of what we call proverbially the Ten Commandments. And he points out that the Jewish people experienced something other that, uh, than any other nation has ever experienced from the beginning of creation. Has God ever attempted to, so to speak, come and take a nation from the bowels of another nation? The Masa is Ba'isis of Amesim with wonders and miracles and signs of Muhammad doing war against this host nation. Will be a Chazaka with a mighty hand, of Zer Natuya with an outstretched arm, of Meiroim Gedolim with awesome wonders. Kechol Asher Asa Hashem Lachem Hashem Alekechem B'Mitzrayim Lenecha, as per all the things that God did for you when you left Mitzrayim. So Moshe Rabbeinu has referenced in talking about the extraordinary and unique experience of the Jewish people. In verse thirty-three, references Matan Torah. In verse thirty-four. He references Yitzhiya mi Mitzrayim. And now the question is, what is verse 35 talking about? And this is a very famous verse. We recite this on a regular basis in Shul. And today we're going to focus on trying to understand what seems to be superficially somewhat simplistic, but is really a very, very profound and difficult verse to understand. So Moshe Rabbeinu says, Ata das, You have been shown to know ki havaya or Hashem hu alikim. But here we emphasize the idea that it's Yudke Vavke, the ineffable name of God representing the transcendent energy of divinity. That Yudke Vavke, that Havaya, Hu Hu Alekim, is the God who creates nature. Alekim is Bigematria Hateva. Alekim has the same numeric equivalent as the word the nature. So that's the God of concealment. The God of revelation is the God of concealment. The God who creates is the God who inhibits and conceals. Ein Oid Mulvadai. There is nothing outside of God. So the question becomes, what does this verse speak about? Is Moshe Rabbeinu referencing Yetzirah mi Mitzrayim? Does he talk here about going out of Egypt? Or is he talking about Matan Torah? And what does it mean? When we say you have been shown to know. What were we shown? What did we know? What, what does it mean? Havaya Alikim? So Rabbeinu Bechaya says that this is a continuation of what was said earlier. Namely, the miracles of going out of Mitzrayim. And he says, Ein You saw that nobody could stand in the way of Hashem when He wanted to take you out of Mitzrayim. The Egyptians tried to stop Him. They rose up with obstinance. It didn't help them. In the end, when God decided a nation would come out of Egypt, they came out of Egypt. <laughs> it's like, ain't it? There's no, no way that a power could overcome God. So, according to the Bein Bechaya, verse 33 speaks about Matan Teda. Verse 34 speaks about going out of Mitzrayim. Verse 35 also speaks about going out of Mitzrayim. And then verse 36, from the heavens, he let his voice be heard in order to chastise you. That goes back to, to, to Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim, to uh, Matan Teda. So this is kind of like a play of Matan Teda, Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim, Matan Teda. Meshach Beno is reviewing the two great events in the history and the life of the Jewish people. Going out of Mitzrayim and Matan Teireh. If you want to simplify it, Pesach and Shavuos. 
Pesach and Shavuos. These are the two great anniversaries in our national history. Miraculous anniversaries. Of course, we have Hanukkah, but that's a rabbinic holiday because many years later, it's not so miraculous. The miracles you have to look for, the miracles are not so overt. Purim, you really can't see the miracles. It's, it's, it's hidden. Sukkot, Sukkot commemorates not an event that happened, but rather 40 years of sojourning in the desert. So the two great events in the making of a nation is going out of Mitzrayim and then receiving the Torah. And that's what Meshav Beno references here when he tells the people, do you know how special you are? Do you realize how incredible your experiences have been? Unreplicated, unparalleled, unmatched. You are unique, and therefore you have a unique mission in this world. Others also maintain that this is about Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. So, for example, we have, um, we have the Ibn Ezra who says, Hashem showed you wonders, He showed you miracles. Not everybody saw the miracles. Some of the Egyptians saw some of the miracles. Some other of the Egyptians saw other of the miracles. Nobody saw all the miracles as you did. From going out of its time, through Kriyas Yamsuf, beginning of Pesach to the end of Pesach, you saw the full range, the full gamut of God's miracles, of God's revelation, and therefore you know, in Ed Muvade. However, Sephorno and the Ramban have a totally different take on this. They say that God has shown himself in order for you to contemplate and to know without any doubt that God precedes all of existence. So we must be talking, according to Ramban and Sephorno, about Matan Torah. For whilst Yitzhiyam in Mitzrayim and the various miracles that led up to Matan Torah serve as a preparation, it was a primer, but ultimately the knowledge that there is nothing other than God in this world, which is more of a theological concept rather than a salvation or a saving, but they experience this theology, they experience this reality, this must refer to Matan Torah. The Al Sheikh clearly says it's talking about Matan Torah. The Al Sheikh says that Hakadosh Baruch Hu showed Himself that Havaya is Elikim, meaning the same God of mercy is the same God of judgment. So this is in the ancient world and in the modern world. People couldn't conceptualize of a reality that God should do both good and bad. Machi masi makes you sick and heals you. How, how, how could it be the same thing? They still can't, you're right. So in ancient Greece or, or ancient Rome, which is you know, the, the, the last relics of idolatry, of major idolatry, there was a god of everything. Everything under the sun, so to speak, including a god of the sun. And even later on, Western philosophy and civilization, which accepted the concept of monotheism, nonetheless attributes power to Satan, the devil. This is what's good and this is what's bad. And God may be stronger, he'll win the battle, but bad can come from good. Can't come such a thing. So the al said, the Jewish people saw and understood how HaKadosh Baruch Hu, who is Rachamim, he's the same HaKadosh Baruch Hu, who is Din. Din and Rachamim are not chas v'shalom, two separate entities, judgment and mercy and compassion. God's harsh and demanding reality does not differ, not differ it's intrinsically with God's compassion and mercy for us. The Baal HaKedah says that HaKadosh Baruch Hu made spiritual realities come close to them, which means spiritual realities intersected with their, their reality. And in doing so, HaKadosh Baruch Hu made this world transparent. He peeled away the concealment, the cover, the camouflage that doesn't allow us to see the power of God that enables this world to exist. God peeled that away. And when God peeled that away, God revealed to the Jewish people what's called Sayyid Hayichud, the secret of oneness. We say Shema Yisrael, Havaya Lekeinu, Havaya Echad. This is really what preempts Havaya Lekeinu. This comes before Shema Yisrael. This is what Hashem showed us in the rest of our lives. We spend the rest of our national existence till Mashiach comes trying to contemplate this, trying to see it, trying to know it, even as much as we can't see it the way our ancestors did. The Balaturim says clearly Har Sinai. He says, Bahar Sinai, he showed them Shamayim, Ve'eretz, Ushmea Shamayim, and he said it's all this is the Shosechad. It's all one God. Heavens, the stratosphere, the spiritual reality, the material reality, the earth, it's all one. It's all one. There is no multiplicity, chas v'shalom, within the reality of divinity. So what does Rashi say? Because none of this is simple. <laughs> like, what's the Pshutta Shal Mikra of Atahare Saladas? We, we speak here about being shown something that we cannot really understand. Like Rambam says, could you ever explain 
the beauty of color to a person born blind? Could you ever explain the, the, the exquisite nature of music or the difference between one kind of music or, or, or cadence or somebody, or somebody who's born deaf? How would you explain, you explain a symphony to somebody born deaf? So we're talking about things we have no frame of reference for. Seeing heaven, seeing the spiritual reality. So ataharesa, okay, they saw. What did they see? We can conceptualize. We talk almost like as what they knew afterwards. So whatever God showed them, He showed them. And then this is what they knew. This was the result of what they knew. So this is how Rashi puts it. Very, very unusual interpretation. Rashi says, you want to know what this means? Okay, you have to look in the Targum. Look in Targum Uncle. It's Kitargum. What does the Targum say? The Targum uses the word Ischazesa. Ischazesa means you were shown or you saw. In other words, God caused you to see. And when you saw, you saw that Havaya who will came in Eid Movade. What? And it's not that God showed you in Eid Movade. That's not a thing to show. He showed you. He showed himself to you. And when he showed himself to you, you knew in Eid Movade. Says Rashi. So clearly Rashi follows the approach that we're talking about. Har Sinai. When the Almighty gave the Torah to the Jewish people. Pasach lahem, he opened for them shivarakim. He opened for them seven heavens, which is a euphemism. It's an it's really a parable for different realms, different levels of spiritual reality. It's called proverbially seven heavens. And just as he tore open the heavens, says Rashi kachkara esatachtenim. He ripped open the lower reality. So first it says. Rashi says, Pasach, he opened. And then he says, he ripped, tore open. So we have to understand that. And it says, when God did that, when he opened the heavens and then tore everything open, ripped it all apart, then Roshu Yechidi, then they saw that he is one. So in other words, that's what Rashi says, this means Haresa, Ischazesa, you were, you were shown. What were you shown? Whatever you were shown, you were shown, and you came to the conclusion, you knew that Hashavaya Hu Alekim, which could be like the Alshech says, could be like, like Ramban says. Rashi doesn't go into that. Rashi doesn't focus on what you saw. He doesn't even focus on the meaning of what is Einoid Movadai, because it's not a Pshuta Shom Mikra. There's, this is not Pashut. There's nothing simple about that. You figure it out. Einoid Movadai, there's nothing other than God. There's no need for further commentary. You don't have to kind of. Uh, Fill that in with there was rachamim and din, there's concealment and there's and there's revelation that there's various realities and it's all the shus echad, it's all one reality. Rashi doesn't go to those details. It's not Rashi's job to explain those kind of midrashic uh, 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 metaphor and allegory. It's, it's not Rashi doesn't go there. What does Rashi focus on? He focused on the atahare. So what, so what were they shown? And obviously Rashi cannot tell us what they were shown. Maybe Rashi himself didn't have words. Maybe he didn't know. Maybe tzaddikim do know, maybe they don't know, I don't know. So Rashi's talking to us, five-year-old students. He has to explain to us what, what, what happened here. He says, what happened here was that God ripped everything open. And when he ripped it all open, you knew. You knew. What did you know? You knew that Avaya is Kim. You knew that Eidam Ovade. You knew that it's all, everything is one. Any reality, from, from any which way you look at it, it's all one. It's all one reality. The concept of Hashem Echad. Rashi's focus is on not the meaning of Hashem Echad, which even a child could understand. That, 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 that the same God that gave me good things and the same God that gave me, that, that, that tested me and tried me. It's all one God. A child can understand that. And what happened there is God ripped everything open. So, so how did Rashi help us by talking about ripping things open? Why does he start with opening and then he talks about ripped? So let's take a look here and see how the Rabbi explains this. Very important verse to understand, my friends. We say it every single Shabbos. It's a foundational verse in Judaism. So the first question the Rebbe asks here on page Nun Aleph is, why does Rashi shift gears? Why does he start by talking about opening and then move into the business of ripping? Pasach lahem shivarakim, open for them seven heavens, and then we talk about rip. He ripped, he tore, kora. Why use that terminology? 
It sounds so destructive. It sounds it's not like God think. God doesn't destroy. God, God creates. God's not the destroyer. He's the creator. He's not the terminator. Why do we emphasize this idea that God ripped things, tore things? That's the point. And then we say like, he's, you know, God the ripper. He ripped. And just as he ripped open the heavens, he ripped open the earth. What, what does it mean? So the Rebbe explains this all within the realm of a, called, called Pnimi Sonyanim. We're going to have a more of a mystical and Hasidic interpretation in understanding this. This is not really Pshat, but this is a profound understanding. Yes, the Rebbe suggests that there is a foundational and intrinsic distinction between the, I, the words and ideas of Psicha and Kriya. The difference between opening and ripping. It's a big difference. Psicha, he bimohusa piyula chiyuvis. Opening something is a positive act. It's almost a creative act. To open a window. To open doors. It's, it's something that gives whatever you're talking about an upgrade. Before it was closed, and now it's an open. It was a closed book, and now it's an open book. It's not a rip book. It's not a torn book. It's an open book. It's something Hamisha Peres has said over. This is an upgrade. It makes things better. The thing that is opened is better for it. It actually brings it to a state of perfection and completion. Something which is useful can be opened and closed. If you can't open it and close it, you can't do anything with it. I mean, think of a house. A house that's sealed. What are you going to do with that? A house that has a door. You can do a lot with it. You can live with it. You come in, you go out. Kriya le'umazais, tearing on the other hand, is a pu'ula shlilis. It's a negative thing. When, when you say somebody tore open my house, that's not a good thing. So they ripped open. They ripped this. Pre- he ripped me apart. Ripped me apart is not. So you could say somebody, he opened me up. person could say, I, I, I couldn't figure things out. I couldn't understand. And I had this teacher, this mentor. And they opened my abilities. That means somebody brought you to a shlemus. You were lacking the ability before to understand and appreciate. You were unable to marshal and muster your own ability and talent. And sometimes in life we come across a person who has the God-given ability to open, to develop what's called in Hebrew lefateach, which comes to the word peticha, to sort of unfurl, to open, this, to, to open the accordion. Everything was packed in. I wasn't able to use it. Then it became opened. That's a good thing. But if somebody says to you, I'll rip you open, I don't know, this doesn't sound very exciting. Against your will. Huh? It's, against it's, your will. it's against your will. It's violent. It's no fun. No, no, nobody wants to be ripped. So it's a very, very different kind of word. It's a pa'ula shlilish that the Rebbe says, really. It's actually, it's a negative, has negative connotation. It's, it in, it's indicative of mevateles, hoireses, to do away with, to destroy whatever it is you're talking about. And the Rebbe says, for example, tearing a garment or opening a garment. Opening buttons is normal. Tearing open the jacket, that's crazy. What would you do that for? And the Rebbe says that's exactly why Rashi starts off with the terminology of open and then he talks about Torah. Why? So when he talks about the Shiva Rikiyam, the seven heavens, before he talks about earth, he says Posach. He says God opened, Posach Lehem, he opened for them the Shiva Rikiyam. Ha'olum Asal Yoinim, the higher worlds, contain Kaviyachal, this idea of divine revelation. The world where angels live, the world where spiritual realities exist. It's, it's, a, it's a higher world, a world of higher consciousness. So, so if it's a world of higher consciousness, can we benefit? And the answer is not really, because we are unable to relate to that world. The problem with that lofty consciousness or higher world is that it's sealed. It's off limits for us. We hear about it. We don't really understand it. And we're not able to appreciate it. And yet, on that glorious day of Matan Torah, he did open the door or the window. 
He let them understand and see the angelic realities. They saw a godly reality. The worlds which are usually sealed off to us now became open, overt and obvious. The godly revelation that resonates and lives within the confines of those spiritual realities, his galu, v'nichsipu, they became revealed and opened before the eyes of the Jewish people. In the material world, conversely, there is no gili eleki tivi, there is no natural way to find God. People say, prove to me there's a God. Show me God. Here's my microscope. Why don't you show, show God to me? And this, does this tie into uh, Kriyat Yamsu? Does it tie into It's a very good question, Marty. In some way it does, because the idea of Kriyat Yamsu is God tore open the concealed world. Right? Ripping open the sea is tearing open the concealed world. But you know that Kriyat Yamsu was but a preparation for Matan Torah. So it was experienced microcosmically at the Reed Sea, in the macro, in the fullest sense, when we stood at Harsinai. Good point. So when we talk about this world, this world, what, is it, what does it reflect? What does it resonate with? The sense of Yeshu Satsmois, the world that is. Who's God? This world is. We are. We have science. We have knowledge. We can analyze things. The world brought itself into existence. There's a certain independence, an unhealthy independence, which is only, avail only available in this world. This is the only world where atheists can live. There's no atheist living in Bria and Yetzirah, no atheist living in Atsilus, no atheists live in, the, in amongst the angels. Atheists can only live amongst us. But God made it that way. And, and God created a world that can allow for the polar opposite and full denial of God's reality, of God's existence. That's how you define, that's the definition of Olam Hazer. Olam Hazer, this world, is the place where it's possible to deny God's existence. Now, for God to suddenly show us that His presence is right here. God is not out there, He's right here. God is everywhere. What would have to happen? This is not a question simply of opening the world, because the world in and of itself cannot reflect this. It's a truth that the world, by virtue of its own definition, by dint of its own reality, cannot reflect. Because if that happened, it wouldn't be anymore. Ah, it wouldn't be anymore. And then what happened? And then it became. So from not being, or something that couldn't be in this world, and suddenly this world is reflecting it, what would you call that? That's called this world is ripped open. It's not the natural part, it's not a natural progression where the world is suddenly revealing what it contains. Because this world does not overtly contain godliness. The godliness it contains, it contains in a secretive fashion. Hashem specifically created a world called Elam Hazah, which by virtue of its very being cannot reflect godliness. It's built to conceal godliness. And on that wonderful morning, God tore open the earthly reality. And we suddenly saw God. The earthly, material, physical reality was, in a sense, destroyed. Like, like, like the Al Shekh says, it became well, transparent. One patch of earth, which is Harsina, or all over the I world. Can't, I can't tell you if it was in a patch of earth. It was a geographic thing. The people who were there, the people who were living in Ilum Hazar Gashmi, they were living in the material world, and at the same time, life for them at that moment was not like life for me and you. Life for us is a life of concealment. We lived the life of Megillus Esther, so to speak. Hastad Aster. A life of concealment where God's miracles can be found, but only when you put a lot of dust and look for the fingerprints. Does this mean they were able to understand and relate to everything? Yeah. Or they just saw it? No, they, 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 but that's what Rashi says. They saw it to the point that they understood it. And that's why we use the terminology kara. The God tore it open. So why do we use the terminology tearing with regard to the harder, higher world then? The Rebbe says the truth is that any godly revelation that exists in the higher world is also limited. It's also limited. It's not, a, it's not full on revelation. And once God tore open the lower worlds, He tore open the higher worlds also and He revealed the essence of divinity. In other words, go to the bottom of the page. Rashi is actually talking about two stages of Matan Teirah. Bishlav Harishain, in the first stage of Matan Teirah, Pasach Lam Shivarakiim, 
He opened seven worlds. He showed them the spiritual reality. He made them aware of and allowed them to see the heavenly reality, the spiritual reality. He revealed before the Jewish people, he demasked the heavenly reality, the divine revelation as it exists, as it resonates in the higher world. In a later, mo- in a later period, within that morning, just as he, he ripped open the heavens as he ripped open the earth. In other words, they saw the essence of divinity. They saw not God that the angels see, but they saw God, God himself, what's called in the language of Hasidus, Atmos, the essence of divinity. Don't ask me to describe it because we don't know what that is. But it became revealed on that morning, and that requires a ripping open. Not only a ripping open of earth, even a ripping open of proverbial heaven is also required because heaven can also not naturally or organically reflect that truth. And so ultimately we talk about kriyasa, the tearing, the ripping, or bitula, the melting down of mitziyas acheres, of other reality, the luhanailis b'yesa, the only thing that then rose, the only thing when everything else was gone was the essence of divinity. And that's what our ancestors knew. And the Rebbe points out in another sikha, he says, with going out of Kriyas Yamsuf, a person could always say, God is more powerful than the Egyptians, but not more powerful maybe than the Canaanites. Actually, that is what the Miraglim said. So there's no Eneid Movada. And therefore, the Rebbe says, Rashi favors the approach that talks about Matan Torah. And at Matan Torah, they saw literally Eneid Movada, that there was nothing else. What they saw, we will, Amir Hashem, re-experience and see with the coming of Mashiach speedily and in our days. Amen. You also indicated it was the essence. The heavens are a limitly revelation. What they saw about Antero was limitless. So that's still, that's still within our-